I'm no expert, and um, I'm sure by now, if you haven't seen the fight, watched the highlights, or at least heard about it or read about it, you know that Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder Part 3, the trilogy completing the fight that we just had this past Saturday night was a fight for the ages, a heavyweight clash of the Titans that did not disappoint. In my humble opinion, Deontay Wilder did the boxing world a favor by forcing Tyson Fury into the third fight that everybody thought was dead in the water. Uh, you know, we all know that it was supposed to take place in the summer. Fury got COVID, pushed it forward a couple months. Either way, the fight happened, and it was good that it did. Tyson Fury was set to fight uh, Anthony Joshua in a British heavyweight um, showdown that would have produced huge numbers in the live gate attendance as well as on pay-per-view, I'm sure. But that fight would not have been nearly as exciting or competitive, in my opinion, as the fight we got on Saturday night between Fury and Wilder. Um, as I said in my last video uh, about Usyk and Joshua, Joshua, although he is a, a better technical boxer, allegedly, uh, while he is a better technical boxer than uh, Deontay Wilder, uh, uh, he's also a very powerful hitter. I do not think he is as strong a puncher as Deontay Wilder, and he does not possess the chin, nor the heart, nor the, the will to gut it out and battle in the trenches that we've seen Deontay Wilder put on display, especially in this fight against Fury. Um, Fury is the, in my opinion, the best heavyweight since Lennox Lewis. And, um, you know, he said it himself. He's number one. Deontay Wilder's number two. Now, the thing that, for me, the reason why Deontay Wilder could never beat Tyson Fury, I mean, he had his best chance Saturday night, and he surely gave it his all. And, um, uh, you know, hats off to him for that. You know, props, respect. The dude showed a mad heart, and uh, he put up a good fight. But he just came into the game late, and he never really became a technical fighter the way he needed to. It's almost like sometimes having the talent, the skill, or the huge eraser it can be a detriment because it becomes a crutch. It becomes something you lean on, and it's hard to develop the technical subtleties um, that it takes to beat a superior pugilist like Tyson Fury, who also shows tremendous chin, tremendous heart, and tremendous guts and willingness to battle in the trenches. That was not easy for him. It took every bit of uh, superior technical skill to beat uh, an equally game Deontay Wilder. I mean, if it wasn't for his uh, boxing ability and ability to put together combinations uh, in a way that Deontay Wilder is not able to, is the reason why he was able to win. Deontay Wilder's lack of defense, his lack of head movement, his lack of uh, bobbing and weaving, slipping, this is why he lost. He repeatedly ate right hands. Um, he was able to withstand them. He got knocked down, obviously, but the accumulative damage that he took uh, is, is eventually what led him to get that glass Joe style, that Tyson, Mike Tyson's Nintendo punch out style knockdown where he, he literally spun like Ring King, any of the old classic video games where it's like a dramatic knockdown. The dude was, um, you know, spun around by that final knockdown. And it's because he kept eating that same right hand over and over. Um, it was a war, uh, you know, both men gutted it out and it was a beautiful thing to watch if you're a boxing fan a fight fan the question is where do each fighter go from here um obviously the boxing world wants to see a unification about between tyson fury and alexander Usyk. um that would be a great clash of styles could Usyk box and be elusive enough to avoid those huge heavy blows of tyson fury could he put up a uh a performance similar to what he did to AJ, I don't know. Um, you know, I'd be intrigued to watch it, but I just think Fury would ultimately just wear him down. He was too big uh, for Deontay Wilder, who put on extra muscle, uh, did power lifting to uh, increase his ability to withstand the, the inside fighting, the wrestling tactics of Fury, and it still wasn't enough. Usyk significantly smaller than both men, so I think he might have trouble he might just get worn out through the sheer size of um, Tyson Fury. We shall see. Um, Wilder needs to take some time off. He took a lot of damage. He doesn't even necessarily need to fight anymore. He's 35 years old, which is not old, but in boxing, 
and taking the types of beatings he's taken in the last two fights, that's going to definitely take a toll on him. We don't want him to get uh, permanently injured. Um, he could fight and defeat a lot of other fighters. I mean, it'd be interesting to see him versus AJ. I know AJ's got to fight uh, his rematch clause he's got against Usyk, but I don't think the boxing world is intrigued by that fight so much right now. I think we all kind of largely believe that Oleksandr Usyk will repeat his performance and defeat Anthony Joshua again and eventually set up the showdown that we all want to see, which is Usyk versus Fury. Um, but we've got to wait for that. And uh, should Deontay Wilder continue to fight, he could fight Anthony Joshua. I'm assuming Joshua's going to lose to Usyk. So those two could fight to see who's like third place, I guess you could say. But uh, what's that really going to prove? I guess they could both make uh, multiple millions for that. But um, both men, I don't think, are going to be able to... Neither man, man could be the actual champion. Neither man could defeat Tyson Fury at this point. And uh, what would be the point of continuing on to fight just to know that even if you eventually got to the point of regaining the title, it would probably, in my estimation, be after Tyson Fury um, was to retire. You know, I mean, sure, you could fight, but you're never going to be the champion. Neither man could be Fury. Wilder gave it his best shot. Props to him. He hasn't make, made any excuses yet, and I hope he doesn't. Just accept your defeat like a man. Uh, Tyson Fury is a classy champion. He's a worthy champion, and I like Deontay Wilder, and he showed why he is probably the only man at this state, at this stage right now who could hang with Fury like that and give us a fight like that against Fury. Um, so he surely proved that he is not a bum. Um, he is uh, truly a great uh, fighter. He just didn't develop the technical skills that he needed to be an all-around complete fighter, and it showed Saturday night. Um, I kind of don't like how he didn't want to show sportsmanship afterwards, but I'm sure he was all butthurt from getting knocked out. But either way, great fight. And uh, yeah, Wilder, he could retire. He's a, he's rich. I'm sure he's got enough money and he could find a way to parlay his career into money, as they all do. But, uh, you know, Fury showed why he's the best heavyweight, uh, in my opinion, since Lennox Lewis. Uh, he's a great champ. You know, he doesn't have much to prove anymore either. He's 33 years old and all he's got to do is uh, win a couple more fights, beat Usyk, unify it, uh, unify it, unify the title, and maybe defend it one more time after that, and he could retire too. I mean, but either way, great fight, uh, worthy of, of the great all-time trilogies, as we've heard. And uh, what what really kind of like summed it up for me, there was a moment, I think it was in the fifth round, when uh, they both tried to throw a right hand and their arms kind of just like connected at the elbow. I was like, yeah, that's what that sums this fight up. They're both going for it, and they're both just right there, just inches away from knocking each other out at any moment. So um, I'm no expert. I just call it how I see it. Uh, tell me what your thoughts on the fight were and where each fighter uh, should, could go in the future, their respective futures in their career. Uh, yeah, and until next time, you want to.